anything here. Giant, giant. Honey, honey. So it's a honey moving, uh, uh, sorry, a beehive moving day. Um, this is July, 5th, uh, 6th of July, and we're moving um, bees. We've got a trailer here which we borrowed from the farm. Because so I've gone from four hives to 25 so far. You pick peas then. You be careful with your gloves off, mister. Yeah, I'm not getting And uh, ba ba basically, none of those hives are strong enough to make honey. So, well, you know, they're, they're on the cuff, some of them, but certainly they're, they're a far cry from what I, they would normally be this time of year. Normally I would have double broods with two or three supers on them. And the strongest hives are only just starting to work super number one. Um, so obviously we're July now, so I could leave those hives and not split them and maybe end up with a honey crop. Um, but anyways, my thirst for creating more bees is high. So um, it's really hard for me not to just split them whenever they can. But anyways, I've got three hives in the trailer now and i got another um, another three to go on. And then we've got to go collect some pallets for them to sit on. Um, I mean, this hive could have went really, but I've not locked it up. So probably, probably more hives to do. Probably a, you know, it's got a super, um, a, a brood chamber, lots of pollen going in. Look at all that pollen. You know, the queen in there is laying, laying eggs, loads of eggs. But I did take, you've got here, on the 25th of, of uh, June, I took three frames with their bees. And um, you notice they're very strong. Oodles of pollen coming in. That queen will be laying. It'll look good. But when you take a split of three frames, um, you know it can take it can take a, a you know two three weeks for the hive to to, to be the same strength um, as it did. I remember a, a book of mine's quoting that one one brood frame is about a week. Um, you know delays delays a, a hive by a week. Anyways, so we've got. I am this little nuck to take, uh, which is, should be nice and light. You can see the bees tonguing at the entrance to try and get out. I locked them in last night at uh, 11 p.m. Actually, it was midnight. It's midnight. I locked them in. Um, and there's no bees trying to get into them, so I got all the bees. You can see them there. They're all trying to find a way to get out. Oh, I've actually treated these guys as well. You see they've got treatment on them. Um, so yeah. Right, I'm going to get organised and load the trailer up. Well, that's us. Loaded up. Um, and ready to go. We've got six hives. Um, and we're going to take them to... Ah, not going to tell you. Why am I not telling YouTube where I'm taking my hives? Well, that's because there's been lots and lots of hives nicked locally. Um, so uh, it's something that causes me the occasional sleepless night, and which why is another reason why moving hives is a good idea because I'm splitting my beehive. So if I did get robbed out, it means that hopefully, you know, all my apries don't get robbed out. You ready to go, buddy? You excited? He wanted to stay and pick raspberries, so he's a little bit upset. I'll just show you this site. Um, when I part of, part of the reason why I really wanted to bring bees here um, was just because it's such a beautiful site. It's just jaw-droppingly beautiful. Um, so let me show you this. Wait for it. Wait for it. Drum roll. Isn't that just gorgeous? Yeah. Nobody. Well, if you get stung, it's your fault. So supposedly what this has got in it is linseed uh, and buckwheat, which I'm actually not well versed on linseed about whether it gives a crop or not, but the buckwheat certainly does and it's in flower now. And there's the odd facilia going about. Um, so I am, I'm happy. And the reason why um, you can't quite see it right the way down there um, you know, and all the way down to the bottom
spot in the trees there. So it's it's a huge spot, a huge field of um, of uh, buckwheat. This is a very weird um, thing going on, but I thought I would video this for people who might be interested in in bugs. You can see at the bottom of this, um, I think it's a crab apple, believe it or not. Um, you can actually see a little ants. Um, nest. So ants going in and out. They got a hole there at the bottom, and they're coming up and down this tree. And you think, what? Well, what are they doing? Um, so if you come further up to the leaves of the tree, you can see. So here we've got some ants, and we've got some aphids. So what? happens is the aphids are actually feeding off of the tree um, and they're actually see in here they're multiplying and reproducing and what happens is the, the aphids actually produce a sticky stuff a sticky substance and the ants are actually feeding off that sticky substance so you've got a symbiotic relationship that happens between the two. Um, the ants actually care for the aphids uh, while the aphids produce sticky substance for them to eat. You can see this one gleaning over the aphids, sucking up the substance um, and caring for them. Now you can actually get honey that's made from this sticky substance uh, you know, aphid poo, um, believe it or not, and the the you know the bees come along and collect it too. And sometimes you know, you know, basically a three-way bug relationship that produces a honey that is croppable. Um, you know, in some in some some places of the world, it's so prolific that you get it. Anyways, it's interesting. I probably will spray this crab apple because you know ultimately they're feeding off of the life of the tree which is not good for the tree um, but interesting enough to warrant warrant a little video on this hot summer's day So just um, arrived back into the apiary um, and I am uh, checking out the bees and I'm thinking oh yeah you know what, what um, how is it going and this is what I see. <laughs> Good job but this morning I've got two hours penciled off to look at some bees. Um, what that probably is is a little mating swarm so and that was a virgin hive um a virgin split so what's probably happened hopefully it's from this hive and not another one but probably what's happened is that the queen has flew off got mated and in in the excitement of that process when she's come back she's sitting on the outside and not gone in um i do have um some happy life far in there um and when uh, I take a risk, but I have experience when I've, I've done this with virgin hives is that some of them, a small percentage, abscond um, and also they don't like coming back to uh, to them. So I've had this experience before when you've got apple life var in a hive and um, it's a trade-off because you've got a brood break so you've got no, you've got, you've got not, no eggs being laid so you can do it with one treatment um, where you wait for all the brood to hatch, you put, uh, but no eggs have been laid yet, and you put an apple life far in, then one treatment is all that's needed. Um, so it's a great way for treating Varroa. But the downside is they hate the smell um, and they might leave. Um, or that could happen. Now if I let it left that and ignored it, 
I'm not. I'm, I'm actually up in Edinburgh for a week, um, visiting grandparents. So if I um, had chosen not to come down today from Edinburgh, um, which is about an hour's drive, and have a look at my bees, then these would would be away. They'd fly away in a, probably an hour or two when the, when the sun heats up. The rest of them are looking great and lots of lovely raspberries to pick and enjoy. Look at these. They're about twice the size of a, a wild one and twice as sweet as well. Um, absolutely delicious. It's not long, you know, five minutes and you've filled a punnet, you know. Absolutely lovely. If we snap. Well, I've got cracking because I've got about 25. Look at the pollen coming in on this one. That's a great sign. Every single bee coming in there. Jam packed with yellow pollen. I don't know what the yellow pollen is at this time of year. It's not obviously the rape, but we're at the end end of the season, so who knows? Everywhere is coming jam packed with yellow pollen. And it looks beautiful. You can actually see which hives have made it and which hives haven't by um, monitoring the pollen levels. And mo most most of the virgin hives have pollen coming in now. Um, so we haven't had a warm day. Um, you know, it's been sort of 17 degrees tops, but looks like they've all mated. So we'll get in now, have a recce, have a wee see um, what's happened. Great, so working out here, just kind of teasing them. And what I'm actually doing is using this smoker um, to tease them. So. Just to explain, this was a poly hive that got eaten by a chicken. So it's got no feeder and I had blocked the entrance to the feeder. So uh, up there. So what I've done is I've taken that block out and I'm now smoking them into the main hole and up into there. So um, I think this is not a mating nut that's come to this hive i'm not sure because the number of bees in here is a lot lower than it was but there's also a lot more bees here than what i give them so it's probably a combination of because i've got about 10 hives trying to mate a queen here is that when a virgin goes out other bees get excited and join so i think what we've ended up here and you can get this is basically a a mating swarm it's called it's when lots of bees end up joining a queen and she comes back with a whole horde of bees more than what was here um Either that or it's a, a swarm from another hive which has plenty of room and shouldn't be swarming but has decided to, which occasionally happens. So we'll, we'll go through all the other hives and find out, but uh, it's a chance that this is a, a swarm that's merged with this hive, for some reason decided to swarm onto this, the outside of this hive. I'm happy either way because, you know, a good number of bees in here. They're making their way up here. I don't think there's any comb on the outside, but there might be. It depends how many days they've been here. But this is what I'm doing. I'm not too much smoke, but they fly away. But coaxing them up in there. And the numbers are disappearing over time. I'll probably go and do a hive and then come back and see if they're gone. We might find that they've all moved up in there. Well, no queen in this one. Swarm has also disappeared. One or two stragglers, but they've disappeared in there, which is great. Um, so you never know what, you know, there's loads of bees in here, but they had loads of, they had about three or four frames of bees to hatch. You never know, it could be a confusion between these two. I don't know, but I'm going to look through the rest of my hives. Hopefully I've got a spare queen to go in here. You can see it's now, I think it's now like the 12th or something. Um, so it's been... You know, it's been, what, you know, three quarters of a month since the Virgin Queen was in here. Um, it should really be a laying queen by now. So this is me, I've got a, a frame from another hive with eggs in. And these are laden brood cells. Taken from this hive over here, which is open. Double brood, and it's literally just a hive in the apiary. And the sole purpose of that hive is to provide brood frames for, because um, this apiary is where I make my new queens for next year. 
Um, so what I'm going to do, I know there's no... Um, I haven't got my smoker with me. I'm just going to stick this test frame in here. Now these guys are pretty pissy, which is why I think they're queenless. And there's a lot of bees here. So I would love to get these guys queen right as soon as possible because ideally ideally we have these bees put to use rather than sitting there idle i have had them draw out quite a considerable amount of frames you get this frame not gonna fit in there is it so what i need to do is just take this Doing this one-handed with a video is not ideal. Anyways, the more I upset this hive, the more likely the virgin that's in it, if there is one, goes away. Which anyway, at this stage, wouldn't be a terrible thing because I'm quite keen to order a few more. Look at this experience: fatter on the side facing me, thinner on the other side. That hive is thin. Uh, that uh, frame rather is fat, so it should fit roughly. And you can see it's not fitting there, but the bees will sort that out. Certainly, this fat bit is going to fit nicely in there. See that? Um, so, you always have to think about how your frames are fitting. Uh, the vibrations pee them off. So the best you can do this without vibrations, the best as possible. That's them. That's that. And there's my hive tool. Wandering hive tool. Now this goes back straight in to this hive. And it's nice foundation, clean foundation. A new frame this year. It'll go in. It'll get drawn out. They'll love it. Filled with eggs again. Um, you can see it. There's another frame. So I wouldn't stick it next to that one. I'm going to take out this frame and move it one over. Um, but this is uh, this hive is completely two brood boxes, queen as much space as possible, um, and um, the sole purpose of this is to make more bees. They were given a 2020 queen in spring, um, put into a, a, a hive with lots of bees, um, and I'm constantly harvesting full cap frames of brood, leaving them the odd one, um, and. That provides me um, some some bees for all these other other ones that are doing not doing so great. Let's just go through. This is a little tiny tiny little mating nook. It said I looked at it on the twenty five oh six. It says Queen right, which means I saw eggs brood, but NS means not seen. So I've got my marking thing. I've got a pen in my pocket. Look at it, tiny. Now, I often go through these blimmin' things three or four times before I see her because she goes on the wall and... Anyways, it's a while before you actually catch them. You think a tiny hive would mean that you, uh, you find her quickly, but in reality, I often find not. So I'll put you down, I'll go through the hive, and we'll see if we can find her. Here she is. Her Majesty. Oh, where does she go? She is. See, she just blends in. Just blends in. Flighty little thing. Absolutely flighty little thing. Um, this is when they just take off, you know, when they're not on the comb and they're like that. Try and catch them and they just take off. But I'll try and catch her. I need to take her glove off and we'll, we'll see how we get on. Well, I called it. She flew, she took off. I had her in my hand and then she's away. Anyways, honestly. It's probably a trait that she has to fly when she's ever ever found, but um, she'll fly straight back in. It's probably what happened the last time. I went through this three or four times and didn't find her. Um, laying up there beautifully. She's probably she's probably already come back in. Um, you know. I've had them fly back onto the frame, you know, on the underneath of the frame that you're actually holding. I'll just quickly go through it and see if she's flown back in. Well, she's not here. The best thing I can do at this point is just to close up, close up. She's probably one of these bees flying. The best thing I can do really 
is just close up and hope she comes back. She knows which hive she's in. I've um, I've started to get a bit less stressed when this kind of stuff happens because it happens quite a lot, and I know I'm not the only one. Queen's taken off. Rest at peace because I've just looked in, and she's in. She was on the wall in the corner on the bottom. So she flew. She flew straight back in, probably. Um, you know, from the frame I was holding. Straight back into the hive, and they're okay. So you know, I'm not going to mark her today. Problem is, is that she, she, there's only enough bees in here for her to lay about, you know, I don't know, a hundred eggs, and then she's sitting there doing nothing. So what happens is that she gets nervous. She gets used to kind of running all over the hive. She's acting like a virgin. So that's why queens in small mating nuts are blimmin' hard to catch and often fly away. Um, the problem is there's not enough bees. Uh, if I was to combine this or put some more bees in this, um, come back in a couple of weeks, she'll have calmed down, she'll be walking calmly on the, on the cell, on the frame, looking for the next cell to lay an egg in. Well, right now, um, there's, there's nowhere really for her to lay an egg, so she's just wandering about nervously. I'll just show you, um, here's a, a queenie from this. Her uh, paint has actually come off. She's a, a paid for queen, um, light blue. Um, and I've got a little queen marking cage here. Now, I couldn't actually find this one, it's just right here. But uh, worth having two of everything. These are cheap. I mean, that's a fiver, that's an expensive one. These are only like a pound or two. They're not very much. You can kill queens in these ones because you can plunge too far. Um, but worth having two or three of each thing if they're cheap, you know, because you can find one. Um, so, uh, yeah, this hive is... I, I'm happy with them, but they're not quite building up. They just didn't have enough bees to begin with. Um, so I can't fault them. Certainly the laying pattern is absolutely fine. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you this. What you do is that you squish her... Well, don't squish her, hopefully. And um, this one was a bot queen, so she was, you know, 25 quid-ish. Um, just like that, so you can see the thorax there. And then you get the pen. I don't know why they give a dark blue, because a dark blue is useless. You can't actually, I've, I've, I have marked dark blue before. That's the colour of this year is blue. But you need a light blue, not a dark blue. And it's just, you know, using your brain, have a wee think. I'm going to put Queenie down there. And that means I can do the rest of this hive without worrying about squishing or finding queen. Put it like that. Right, and you just wait patiently this. Bees are coming up to see her. You wait patiently and she will go down into that gap. Now the other thing you could trick her to do is blow with your breath. There you go. Straight, straight down into there. Um, it's either the force of my breath but they also hate the smell hate the smell of your breath, they hate it. Um, so that's Queenie in there. I can go through the rest of this hive without worrying about killing her. Tapery, um, a bunch of test frames done. Um, I have gone through every hive. Um, there's no cells here, so my neighbor says he saw a swarm. Um, none of these hives have swarms. So what it probably was likely to be is one of, the one of these abandoned mating nucks. Um, not too bothered about 300 bees and a virgin queen. It's uh, disappointing, but nothing to cry over. Um, and, and yeah, um, that's us. Oh, <laughs> I think, yeah. Daddy! 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 Daddy!